Hi, this is Sharon from Newton Public Library, letting you know about some things we have coming up for teens that, uh, as part of our summer library program, Imagine Your Story, which is uh, focusing on fantasy and fairy tales and things like that this summer. Okay, if you're a teen, uh, you can take part in these challenges. Now, we're pretty flexible about the word teen around here, so if you're not quite a teen yet, maybe you're 10 or 11 or 12, you can totally get in on all of this too. Okay, first of all, if you're not already signed up to be part of the reading program, um, we can get you enrolled in that. That's going on through all of June and July. We're using an app called Reader Zone, and you can record your progress that way, or if you don't want to do that, you can just let us know every week how much you read, and we'll record your progress for you. If you have any questions about that, please email us or call us, and we'll get you signed up. Another challenge coming up for the first part of June is wand making. Now, the cool thing about this project is that you can pretty much use anything you have lying around the house. You don't have to have any specialized equipment to make your wand. Let me show you how I made mine. When I started thinking about making my wand, I just went around and pulled out a lot of materials that I happen to have handy here. So, I have a big container of beads. Beads are always fun. I have different kinds of yarn and string. Paints, paints are good. Sequins are always fun to make something sparkly and shiny. I ran into a container of googly eyes, and there's yarn. Um, I found a container with little shells. Thought that might be interesting. And of course, you can't forget the glitter. So what you want to do is get a nice work area where you're protecting your table or desk with something under your paint, if you're going to paint. And then you need something for the wand. So you can use something as simple as a chopstick. If you don't have one lying around, you might happen to have an old ruler, even an old pencil. And if you don't have any of that, you can always walk outside and just grab a stick. Okay. If you have a hot glue gun, that would be great. Uh, this kind that has the low heat is really even better than the very hot ones because then you can actually touch the glue and shape it the way you want it. Okay, to start mine, I decided to give it a base color, so I painted the stick blue, and then I decided what materials to put on top of it. So this is what I used just for a sample. Okay. I decided to put some shells on. I thought that would be pretty. There are some beads, the googly eyes to make it look kind of mysterious like someone is watching you. And I found some sequins. So I put all of that on with the hot glue gun, picked a nice bead for the top of it, and then after that dried, I just used regular Elmer's glue to put some little dots where there were areas that didn't have anything, and then I put some glitter on to make it extra shiny. Now, here's another idea. Somebody who liked baseball, just put some baseball beads on the top of it. Okay, and I think this is pretty cool. Um, this person just actually used the glue as a decoration and ran the glue around like a spiral. Okay, if you want, you can grab some ribbon at the end and tie that on so you're one makes a nice swishing sound when you wave it around and you're ready to perform your magic spells. If you make a wand and send me a picture of it, or send me a picture of you with your wand, your name will be entered in a drawing at the end of the summer um, to win a gift card. Hopefully I'll be hearing from some of you. Another challenge, challenge we have coming up is a reading challenge. We're going to be reading. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now you're probably saying, that is not Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You're correct. Very observant of you. This is a different Harry Potter book. We did not actually have the first one here in the library that I could hold up. But you are able to access that book either through the Sunflower eLibrary or through Hoopla. Both of those are electronic books. And if you have any trouble doing that, please let us know and we'll help you out. Both of those are absolutely free with your Newton Public Library card. Now, if you read the book, you can join our discussion on June 6th at 10 a.m. This is going to be via Zoom, and I'd like to hear from you. If you want to get involved in that, you need to 
uh, contact me or contact anybody here at the library so that I can get you the information and you can get into the Zoom room to participate. And that participation will also earn you an entry into that raffle at the end of the summer. Hope to be hearing from you soon. Any questions, please call us, email us, or send an owl, whatever works for you. Until then, to Harry Potter, the boy who lived.